All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to the second night of the debates and my immediate gut reaction of everything that happened. Um, pretty much the same topics were covered, and actually I'm going to skip to when they were actually debating. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> and let's go ahead and full screen that. Yay. There we go. So, <laughs> goodness gracious, this debate was not, uh, was not at all, well, it was a lot feistier than it was last night. I'm going to start by saying that, um, Biden, he started off kind of treading water doing exactly what he need, needed to do which is not have a major gap um, which was great and all that um, for anybody who is watching this channel um, the reason I didn't live stream either night um, is because number one I didn't want to but number two actually tonight for this debate I joined LTE on his stream um, whether or not I was actually heard or you know, whether it was tech there were technical difficulties I don't know but I want to extend a very very big thanks to him for allowing me to join on to uh, help commentate um, I'm grateful every time I get to join him because obviously he's the biggest election forecaster here on YouTube and you know, we all seek to reach his level of status within the community. Um, San, now, anyway, on to my reactions. And again, if you like any of the content, just hit like and subscribe. And if you want to comment, go ahead. I, I read every single comment. Whether or not I reply is basically whether or not I think I have anything valuable to add on to what you've said. Um, anyway. On to some of the things that happened in the debate. Sanders, I thought, was just treading water. And I'm really not impressed with his performance so far. He's kind of faded. Uh, you could almost call 2016 his 15 minutes of fame. Uh, Kamala Harris performed extremely well. And by the way, I may not agree with many of the things that were said at the debates. But I'm judging performance based off of how a Democrat would react to their performance. Um, so anyway, yeah, Kamala Harris performed extremely well. Biden at first was avoiding any of the typical mistakes that he normally makes, but then he got into a massive exchange with uh, Harris, and that just ended poorly. Uh, Andrew Yang fell off the face of the earth. He maybe spoke three times and his closing statement I think I made a joke about it on LTE stream calling it a closing state would Im statement would imply that he actually said anything before then um, Buttigieg in my opinion was the one who came out as the big winner um, if we're talking about a, across the entire debate uh, Harris definitely challenges him And yes, I know this is the second night where I've had some form of booze on my desk while doing this video, but I'm going to be honest here. This was a lot more entertaining even without the beer. Um, <laughs> let's see. Miriam, uh, sorry, Mary, Marianne Williamson. Um... I've heard her, people say her name is Miriam or Miriam or whatever. No, Mary, uh, Marianne Williamson, she was just not impressive. She was a lot more combat combative than I think maybe people expected. But at the same time, uh, she definitely... Um, she definitely did as much as she could to make herself well-known. Um, 
but I think she definitely came off as a bit of a fruit loop at times, especially during her closing statement when she said the only thing that can beat Donald Trump is love. I mean, that's some Beatles stuff. All you need is love, 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 love is all you need. <laughs> and forgive me for that, the Beatles are not within my vocal range. Ask me to sing some Thin Lizzy or Cream or... I can do Rush, just don't ask me to be perfectly on spot with Getty Lee's voice. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. Swalwell wants to go the Australian model when it comes to guns. And to him, I'm just going to, you know, tell him to read between the lines or uh, tell him to learn some British slang. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, she is not doing anything to dispel the nickname I've given her, Hillary Clinton Light. The same great corporate taste as Hillary Clinton, but without all the... Pa Actually, she has ten times more pandering. Um, <laughs> seriously, though. Without... Yeah. Same great taste as Hillary... Uh, same great corporate taste as Hillary Clinton but with only half the authenticity. And considering it's Hillary Clinton we're talking about, that's kind of impressive to have half the authenticity. Um, Hickenlooper did reasonably well. Um, he made a point that he's from a purple state, and he tried to state that he was able to pass progressive agendas in a purple state, but but calling it purple may be a slight bit wrong. It's purple in the sense that it's been voting Democratic since 2008. 2006 if you count uh, Senate and House. Michael Bennett may tried to make similar points in that he is a uh, purple a, a swing state senator. Um, who else is up on that stage? Yeah, no one really that impressive, if I'm honest. Um, off the top of my head, I'd say that Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg. Uh, share a win in this debate and combine them with uh, Elizabeth Warren and Tulsi Gabbard from last night maybe Julian Castro um, that'd be the top five Democratic performances in these primaries or in the in this deba in these debates uh, the top five performances so I'll go fifth place I'm putting Elizabeth Warren she got a win in her debate only because she was focused on so much and didn't trip over herself. Then I'm going to go ahead and say Kamala Harris. Kind of for the same reasons, but she got a major win over Biden in that uh, heated exchange over uh, busing and civil rights issues. Um then I'm going to go ahead and say Julian Castro because he came off as not only authentic, but he managed to actually do what Beto O'Rourke tried to do and appeal to the Hispanic crowd. But he did so in a way that didn't sound like pandering, even though I think most of my family would consider it pandering. Um, I would say the next winner would be I'm going to go ahead and say Tulsi yeah Tulsi Gabbard she portrayed herself very well on foreign policy and I think that's the only real area where Democrats are going to be able to actually make an argument to the middle is that they might be better on foreign policy uh, domestic policy is going to be split 
basically 50-50 in America. It doesn't matter who's up for election. Domestic policy just doesn't matter. It's foreign policy where the debates are going to be held. And I think Tulsi Gabbard set herself up really well there. And the reason why I say domestic policy doesn't matter as much is because the truth of the matter is about half of America is going to be in favor of stricter gun real. Uh, gun restrictions, half of America is going to be in favor of less restrictions on guns. Half of America is going to be pro-choice. Half of America is going to be pro-life. Half of America is going to be okay with things like Medicare for All and subsidized college tuition. Half of America is going to be against that. Uh, half of America, actually probably closer to 60%. I, I don't think LGBT issues are really a debate anymore. I think most people respect that. Um... Immigration, 50% are going to be against stricter rules. 50% are going to be for them. Uh, maybe it's going to be closer to like 45-45 with 10% somewhere in between. But, and that goes for mostly all of those issues. And of course, last is Pete Buttigieg, who seemed to combine the strengths of Gabbard and Harris and Warren but came off with his own authenticity. He came off as moderate enough, and he didn't sound like a policy wonk who's going to alienate middle America because he's so into the weeds. But he's also came off as someone who actually has a plan and actually wants to talk about the issues and not just Donald Trump. So... I'm calling Pete Buttigieg the winner of the two debates just because I think he had the best performance. Um, honestly, it's not going to change my decision. I'm probably not going to vote for any of these people, in let alone the the general. I'm not even going to vote in the Democratic primaries. <laughs> um, mostly because <clears throat> I. I just don't, I don't, I'm not a Democrat, so I don't believe I have the right to tell them how they, who they should nominate. Um, so there's that. Anyway. <clears throat> I think where we can go from here is that as a whole, a few candidates set themselves apart. The five that I named, Warren, Harris, Gabbard, Castro, and Buttigieg. The rest of them didn't really do anything to boost their profile. Some of them did a lot to reduce it. <sighs> Andrew Yang being a primary example of that. Uh, <laughs> and, well, I think the Democratic Party as a whole demonstrated just how lackluster its candidates really are this cycle. When Biden is your front runner, there's something horribly, something has gone wrong when Biden is the front runner. Um, so that's kind of my gut reaction. I'll probably have something better for this uh, in the coming days. I've recorded a video a while back, so tomorrow there's going to be a, I'm going to upload a video some point around midday maybe. Um, and it's going to be my ranking of American presidents on a tier list minus a certain amount. Uh, you'll get the, you, you'll get a more clear thing. Uh, but I recorded it a few weeks ago and I don't have any, <sighs> sorry about that, it's late and... I've been trying to cut out coffee in my life, uh, at least a small amount, but I only had two cups today, so that's probably why I'm falling asleep, is I haven't had my normal amount of coffee. Yeah, seriously, normally I have like five cups or something stupid like that. Anyway, so thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed, and sorry about the rambling, I'll see you guys next time, take it easy, have a nice day, see you guys next time.